All right, guys, welcome back to Underground Science. And in this video, we'll be talking about four common glial cells of the central nervous system. All right, so um, we're talking about the central nervous system in this video and glial cells, all right? So let's go and get started. So glial cells are pretty much cells in the central nervous system other than neurons that work to, to help the, central, the neurons of the central nervous system. And, maintain, and help maintain the overall health of the central nervous system. All right, by, and some of the main functions of glial cells are to maintain cerebral spinal fluid flow throughout the central nervous system, to, throughout the central nervous system. Couldn't talk there for a moment, sorry about that. Um, it's also used for a blood-brain barrier um, to make sure nothing toxic comes into our neurons, to maintain ion concentration, and to uh, have good immunity. So that glial cells have major important functions of the central nervous system. We're just gonna go over the four um, basic uh, glial cells of the central nervous system. So the four we're gonna touch on today is, the first one's gonna be, or not the first one, just the first one I'm listing is microglia, all right? Now, microglia are pretty much just macrophages, all right? They're macrophages, but inside the brain and spinal cord, all right? So ma macro phages, all right? And then, so that's, just remember microglia as macrophages, but specialized macrophages inside the uh, central nervous system, all right? Our next one that we'll talk about is our ependymal cells, all right? Our ependymal cells. Hopefully I spelled that right. All right, so our ependymal cells are pretty much specialized epithelial cells, or not, but they're just epithelial cells, right, that help produce and circulate cerebral spinal fluid, cerebral spinal fluid throughout the brain, all right? So we're just going to go, say, epithelial cells. Actually, let's just go and use a different color. We're going to say epithelial cells, epithelial cells that are uh, involved in involved in circulating and producing circulating and producing cerebrospinal fluid all right we're just going to go and abbreviate that so cerebrospinal fluid um, is circulated and produced by the ependymal cells all right they help in producing and circulating the cerebrospinal fluid throughout the brain so that's our second type of glial cell in our central nervous system. Let's see what our third type is. Our third type of glial cell is going to be our oligodendrocytes. Oligodendrocytes. All right. Now, the main function of oligodendrocytes are in the central nervous system is to um, produce the myelin in our white matter. All right. So produce slash synthesize our myelin, um, myelin in our central nervous system. And the last one we'll talk about, the last glial cell in the central nervous system we'll talk about is our um, astrocyte, all right? And our astrocyte, astrocyte is actually like a beast, all right? It has like a lot of cool functions, like we'll see in glial scarring, right, involved in the immune system, um, involved in our blood-brain barrier. So we'll just go and write that down because that's its main and cool job, all right, blood-brain barrier, but it's involved in many other things that we'll see, all right, and so let's go and get started. I don't know if I might, if I'll, I don't know if I'll be splitting this um, topic up into two videos or not, but hopefully let's go and squeeze as much as we can in this video, because I don't, I've been making my videos a little too long lately, so I'm going to try to make it shorter so you guys don't, like, sleep midway through, all right, so let's go and get started. So, Let's talk about our oligodendrocytes first, all right? So let's go and get started. Sorry about that. So let's go um, right here down to this picture. So our oligodendrocytes, let's say we zoom in in a particular area in our cerebrum, all right? And let's say we zoom in, I don't know, right about here maybe. And we zoom in and we see, let's go zoom into a particular neuron and a little capillary blood vessel. All right, that's feeding oxygen to our brain tissue. So if we have a 
neuron, let's say right here, right? We have a neuron with its amazing dendrites, right? Let me just stay consistent with the smiley faces. All right, so we have a neuron that has its dendrites right here and it's trying to function, all right? Just a regular neuron uh, with its axon projecting and its synaptic terminal or its axon terminal and its synaptic cleft and we have a blood vessel that runs about right here, right? So we have a blood vessel that's running, oh, let's do about right here, like that. So let's go and write this as a blood vessel. And we're gonna say we have just plain old blood in here, right? So blood running through here in our blood vessel, and we have a plain old neuron here, all right? So what an astrocyte will do what an astrocyte will do is it's just gonna it's gonna regulate what comes through the blood and into the neuron for energy, right? So it's a regulator. So it's a, kind of like a blood-brain barrier, right? So an astrocyte is gonna kind of look like this, it looks like a star, all right? So it kind of looks like a star. It'll have these projections, looking like a star, all right? And what it's gonna do is that it's gonna branch onto here. All right, and it's going to regulate whatever comes through the blood. It's going to decide what goes in to the neuron. All right, so it's going to decide here, and it's going to send whatever ions or nutrients the neuron needs, and it's going to try its best to block uh, the neuron off from any bad um, drugs or any bad drugs or toxins. And then neuron can be happy and continue its job. All right, so the astrocyte, the first job we saw, acts as a blood-brain barrier. All right, so that's the first thing, act as a blood-brain barrier. Now let's look at what else it does. All right, so let's go and do another page, and let's go and see what else it does. So let's say, sorry about that, let's say we have, let's say you hit your head or something, all right, you get a mild concussion, and you injure some neurons, all right, so let's say you injure some neurons in here, right here. All right, so let's say this neuron is all injured, right? There's a bunch of injured neurons here. Let's just draw one big neuron, I guess, with its dendrite and its soma and a cell body. And it's like kind of like injured. All right, this is your central nervous system. So we have our injured neuron here. All right. So let's go ahead and draw that sad face. All right. And so our injured neuron right here will. And there's many neurons here that are, that are going to be injured, okay? And our astrocytes will actually come back, and our astrocytes will detect this, and it's going to come back, and if there's only one astrocyte here, right, a star-shaped astrocyte, what's going to happen is that these astro astrocytes are going to start to replicate so they can go and cover the um, injury site up, all right? And they can cover it up from further injury and help, help, um, recover, help that site of area, injury area recover. So what they're going to do is they're going to come all around here and they're going to do something called glial scarring or astrocytosis. All right, so we're going to have a bunch of these astrocytes come in and they're going to come in with these their star-like projections, all right, and we're going to have a glial scarring occur. All right, so we're going to have astrocytes all over here. So we go and draw a couple more and we're going to have glial scarring occur. All right, are also called astrocytosis. So this is just an area of injury in the, in the central nervous system. So if you hit your head real hard, something like that, right, where the neurons in the central nervous system and the brain or spinal cord get injured. So right here, our astrocytes can do another amazing job, which is called astrocytosis, or also called glial scarring. All right, so it's either called astrocytosis or glial scarring, and there's some other um, names for it too, but let's just focus on these two. All right, so um, I mean, if you want another name, another name just popped up in my mind is astrogliosis. All right, so astro and then gliosis. All right, so these are just some different names for the same exact thing. Okay, so I just like to remember glial scarring or astrocytosis. All right, I mean, you can remember as many as you want. All right, so astrogliosis, astrocytosis, or glial scarring. And this is for, like, if you have some injured neurons. All right, so injured 
neurons in the central nervous system. Remember, our glial cells are astrocytes, and our as our, our glial cells, our glial cells are in our nervous system, right? Our central nervous system, not our peripheral nervous system. Okay, so astrocytes are in our central nervous system. Now let's go look at another thing astrocytes do. All right, so they're amazing. All right, so let's go and look at another thing they do. All right, so let's go and draw our smiley face here. All right, and so another thing astrocytes do is, so we talked about our blood-brain barrier. We talked about glial scarring and astrogliosis. And let's talk about how they clean up um, synapses. All right, so how they clean up a synapse. So let's say we have... A nerve, like let's say we have some neuronal neuronal pathway firing here. All right, so let's say we have a synapse. So let's say we have our dendrites. All right, and then we have our soma, our cell body, and then we have our synapse, our our synapse right here. All right, so we have our axon, then our synapse, and then we have another neuron picking up those signals. This is all in the central nervous system, by the way, and that neuron is going to go and synapse somewhere else. All right another place in the central nervous system. Well, you see this synapse right here? There's neurotransmitters that are released, all right? And we'll go over um, the, uh, we'll go over action potentials in a neuron and how everything happens, how everything occurs. But at the end, when the action potentials reach the end of the synapse or the axon terminal, neurotransmitters are released all over the place so the next neuron can pick up the signals get some temporal summation and spatial summation, reach the threshold potential and fire their action potentials and co uh, continue their communication between the neurons, all right? But these neurotransmitters, either there's enzymes there to break them down or there's, um, there's a channel here on the synapse, right, that causes these neurotransmitters to, have, to undergo reuptake. But a really important thing is that there's astrocytes present between the synapse, all right? So let's go and draw this a little bigger right here. So let's just draw the synapse part, all right? So we have a synapse going like this, all right? And then we have another, like a dendrites, right? Dendrites of another neuron, a postsynaptic neuron coming in like this, receiving the signals, all right? So it goes up like that. So we have the synapse here, and there's many neurotransmitters here that are, that are released from this presynaptic neuron, especially the vesicles here, right, through calcium voltage gated channels and all that, and we'll go over that in a future video. But these neurotransmitters, either they're taken up by enzymes, all right, either they're taken up by enzymes or, right, or these neurotransmitters are taken up by these channels here on the um, synapse, known as reuptake channels, and then they go back in the vesicles, right, and then they get ready to be, uh, transferred again to the synapse and another common way is that we have end feet of astrocytes present here so the star-shaped astrocytes so let's draw one right here and we have end feet of our astrocytes present like like so all right so we have end feet here we have end feet here all right and we have end feet all over the place all right so it doesn't actually go over the like the uh, synapse right here, but I'm just trying to show, just to get the concept down, is that we have end feet reaching the um, synapse part, all right? So to reach these neurotransmitters, let me go and differentiate these neurotransmitters in blue. To reach these neurotransmitters, what it's going to do, what the astrocytes are going to do, that's going to take these neurotransmitters through its end feet, all right? So again, these structures right here are called end feet of our astrocytes. And the neurotransmitters are going to get taken up through these end feet of the astrocytes. It's going to get broken down here. And the astrocytes are going to put these broken parts into the synapse of the presynaptic neuron that initially released those neurotransmitters. And then those neurotransmitters in the presynaptic neuron can get formed into the actual neurotransmitters again and get ready to get released. All right, so it's really important to clean up the neurotransmitters in the synapse. So we don't have just random neurotransmitters lying there and just chilling, right? They're always trying to, um, they're always trying to stimulate the postsynaptic neuron. You don't want that. So another job of astrocytes are to clean up, to clean up the synapse, all right, of our central nervous system. 
So remember this, we're talking about our central nervous system still. Okay, and let's go ahead and look at another job of astrocytes. All right, I promise we're almost done. So I'm pretty sure we'll only get to get to astrocytes in this video. We'll cover other glial cells in our future videos. So astrocyte, another job of astrocytes is that um, it's involved in um, nutrients. All right, so nutrient, um, it gives certain amount, it regulates the amount of nutrients that comes from the blood first of all, and then it also regulates at the same time the amount of nutrients in the interstitial fluid of the brain and to the neurons. So let's see what I mean by that. So let's zoom into another portion of the brain, right? Let's say right here again, and let's draw our astrocyte right here, right? Our cool, amazing astrocyte with our end feet projections. And let's not forget our smiley face. It's just a made out square here, just, just a habit. Sorry about that. So let's not forget our smiley face. And then, so we have our end feet projections of our astrocytes, right? To draw that real quick. And one more, kind of looks like a weird spider, I don't know. All right, so that's our astrocyte, and we, there's interstitial fluid inside our brain, all right? There's always interstitial fluid present. And let's say the interstitial, and the interstitial fluid is the fluid between the neurons. It's not the cerebrospinal fluid, all right? And we'll see that later when we talk about ependymal cells, which are other glial cells in our central nervous system. All right, so these are interstitial fluid, and we're seeing that we're so we said interstitial fluid is the fluid between our neurons. So let's say we have neurons right here, right? Right here, we have neurons, and we have neurons all over the place, right here. And let's go into our cell body here. Um, let's see, let's go into our neurons right here. Just one more, and there you go. All right, so these are the fluid in between the neurons, not the cerebral spinal fluid that's present mostly in the ventricles of the brain and some parts of the subdura, subdural space and the subarachnoid space. All right, so the interstitial, let me go and label that. This is the interstitial fluid. All right, and so what the astrocytes will do, it's constantly taking in ions and putting back ions into the interstitial fluid. So it can maintain the ion gradient, you can say, all right? And mostly potassium also. Potassium is a really important um, ion. It's a really important electrolyte. So it can take in many ions inside, right? And then it's gonna release ions. It's gonna regulate the ion concentration in the interstitial fluid, all right? So we're talking about ions here. So the first job in this slide is that for astrocytes, regulates ion concentration, ion concentration in the interstitial, interstitial fluid, right, of, all, as always, we're talking about the central nervous system right now, of the central nervous system. All right, so that's the first job in this slide. Now, another job is that neurons can't really store glycogen as efficiently at all, all right? Very little if so, but astrocytes have a little capability of storing glycogen, right, stored glucose, just a little bit, but they can. And what they do is that they convert that stored glycogen, so it's gonna draw glycogen in orange, I guess. Let's say they have some stored glycogen, they have a capability of storing a little glycogen and converting that glycogen to a chemical or a compound, you could say, called lactate, right? That's the conjugate base of our lactic acid. So lactate, and lactate is a, is, can be used in our neuron as energy. So what lactate can do is it can go to our neurons, and our neurons can get, it's going to taken up, it's going to get taken up, and our neurons can use that to produce the energy they need, or the glucose they need, right, in order to function, right, and maybe inside their um, nucleus and uh, produce energy from that in their mitochondria, all right? So I'm just going to say ATP slash glucose. All right, so that's another thing that um, astrocytes can do, is that they can provide neurons with the constant supply of glucose. And other than that, not only do astrocytes only do that, in regular blood flow, right, we still have constant supply of glucose um, with our regular nutrients that we eat. With our regular glucose that we eat, um, we transport glucose constantly through special glut receptors, right, into our neurons, because remember, Neurons don't need insulin. They're insulin independent. They don't need insulin for glucose to come into the neurons. All right, so that's that. So they have 
Let's go and write that down. They have um, astrocytes provide lactate to neurons, all right? So they can regulate the neurons' uptake of blood glucose, or just of glucose, I should say. So those are the two most important um, jobs when we're talking about ion concentration regulation and lactate um, excretion from the astrocytes to the neurons so then they can use it for ATP and glucose, all right? Okay, so that's that, and we have one more, um, I think, one more job to cover, and this is pretty much a basic job of an astrocyte that it helps provide structure to the neurons because remember it's attached to the neuron and the blood vessel right we don't have to go to another slide for this we can just talk about our first slide where we talked about our blood brain barrier sorry about that where we talked about our blood brain barrier see how it's attached to our blood vessel and to a neuron so it kind of gives it support and rigidity all right our neuron gives our neuron support pretty much so we can go and write that down in this slide also so we wrote blood brain barrier here, and we'll also write the astrocyte provides structural support to our neurons in our central nervous system. All right, to our amazing neurons in our central nervous system. So you can see the astrocyte is insane, right? Like it's a beast. Okay, so that's pretty much it for astrocytes. We'll cover other um, glial cells in the central nervous system and eventually in the peripheral nervous system in future videos. So I really hope those um, this video made sense to you guys. I hope it wasn't too boring. Hope to see you guys in my future videos. We'll talk about more cool topics. Uh, we'll, talk, we'll talk about, I can't talk today, we'll all talk about more cool topics in bio, biochem, physics, and chem. So I hope to see you guys there. Don't forget to hit that notification bell and like and subscribe, and uh, see you guys later, and stay safe.